Okay, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, we'll get a little more stretchy today, but uh, so I want I still want to begin with a short version of the warm ups that we've been doing. Um, I think today we will just assume you know how to do the ankles, and I'll leave that to you. And we'll start just with the knees, putting the hands above the knees and we'll circle them. This actually works the ankles too. So if your ankles feel okay, if feel relaxed, just let's just feel this into the ankles as well. And you can always take a minute, some other time to just do the ankle rotations and flex and extensions. And we'll do the other direction with the knees. And again, timing it to the breath keeps it meditative. So I'm inhaling, inhaling, exhaling, exhaling. That's about how the breath matches the movement for me. Yours may be different. Okay, and then we're gonna do the hips, but let's, before we do that, I wanna just take a minute to really connect with the Hara. So if we could just stand for just a moment. And you might remember that uh, image that I used in the talk the other day of a flat rock dropped into a swimming pool full of jello just making its way down slowly in just such a way our attention, if it happens to be in our head at this moment, making its way down. And there may be little moments where it might want to stop, but just let's see if we can encourage it to go all the way to the bottom. And the Hara actually kind of feels like a bottom if you really let the attention drop. There's a net of nerves there, as I've said before, but it's like a net that can catch our attention, our attention can settle there, but it's an allowing rather than forcing. But if we can use the movement to reinforce our attention there, we're gonna find that helpful to our sitting as well. And it being also our center of gravity, now that's right in the center of the body, it's not on the exterior, it's right in the middle. <laughs> and if you could feel that spot and rest your attention there during the movement, it's easier to feel it because it's actually the middle of things, center of gravity. And if you ever want to feel more centered, it's not just an abstract notion. It's really put your attention there. You're going to feel more centered and not only in sitting, but in life. So, and when we hear grounding, same thing. Grounded low in the body. And from here, we can really feel that connection through the legs to the, to the floor, which is also part of the feeling of grounding. So, Let's do doing our best to keep that feeling in the lower abdomen. Sometimes say breath in the belly, mind in the breath. And remembering that the expansion happens on all sides. Um, around this part of the body, it almost feels like an inner tube all the way around the sides. And when we exhale, we don't lose the full expansion. So there's always a gathering of energy there, a buildup that becomes very palpable and powerful. So hip circles. Same thing, tying it to the breath, feeling the hara. And then feeling also the connection of the feet to the floor. 
And of course, this hip rotation also carries down into the knees and ankles. And we can kind of relax and let that happen to a greater extent. And other direction. Just playing with bringing in the knees and the ankles so the whole legs are loosening. Okay. Let's just shake out the legs a little bit one at a time. And the same thing with the shoulders and neck. I'm going to do a shorter version of all that, but uh, you can always do more on your own. So basic shoulder rolls, if we go forward, we can also put that raising of the chest on the inhale, pulling together the shoulder blades, exhale, curling the spine with the exhale. So it's like that cat cow movement, which we did on all fours yesterday and we'll do again today. Now let's go backward. But we're still feeling the rootedness in the feet. We're still feeling that center of gravity point. Okay, let's do those swivels again that we were doing. This is where we swivel like this and the feet point out in the direction we're swiveling toward. So we don't over torque our, our back or our knees. So like this. And time to the breath again, whatever would make sense. Today it makes sense for me to inhale this way, exhale that way. Might be different for you. Really let the arms swing. See if you can release control of them. Just set them swing and then let go. Okay. We do these arm circles too, first forward. And also, again, we can do the rising in the chest and curling of the back. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And then back the other way, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. I won't do the shoulder shrugs today. I think you can remember how to do them. They're very, very helpful if you've got a lot of shoulder tension. Um, I will just take us through the neck series briefly, just because I'd like you to remember that mnemonic device of yes, no, maybe so. So the first movement being the nodding yes, lifting the head if it feels good. If it doesn't, you can nod down and just come back to center. If you do lift the head, it's about extending the neck and the crown of the head 
towards the corner where the back wall meets the ceiling, rather than crunching it down and back. And lifting the chest helps in freeing the neck. You can also, if you like, bring the shoulder blades together as though you're holding a pencil between them. Again, only as much as makes sense. Okay, so that's the yes movement. This is the no movement. Inhale the center, exhale over one shoulder. Inhale back, exhale over the other shoulder. We've been doing this for a few days. It's probably okay to explore more of your range of motion with this. As long as you're mindful, just do what feels good. Notice as we move up to the head and neck, that changes our relation to the feet and to the hara, but we're still kind of a gently shifting balance from these movements that does have influence from the hara if we pay attention to it. Okay, and then the maybe so movement. One side, the other side, the other side, you don't have to do the hands like that. It just makes clearer why my chiropractor said it was maybe so. And again, with the shoulders, you can raise the shoulders like I'm doing, or you can do less of that. Whatever feels good to your body. Remembering the neck's also always about extension more than crunching. Climbing it with the breath. Okay. And I want to do just that simple pencil stretch with the upward reach. And, uh, and then we'll move into a forward bend and we'll do some work on the floor. So, so the pencil stretch was fingers pointed together like this, palms turned out, stretching up, looking up. If it's good for your neck, you can use a little bit of a back bend if that feels good. Breathing, a few breaths here. Mostly it's about lengthening its spine up. And then we can do either version of the side bend. You can either grip the wrist like we did yesterday or keep the hands like this. And remembering to pull the navel in towards the spine to protect lower back. Bend and extend. Again, this is one of the other ones where there's a lot of extension and length combined with the bending. A few breaths here. Core engaged, belly pulled back. Back to center, other side. If it helps to turn so that you're looking somewhat up at the ceiling, you can experiment with that. Okay, coming back to center. Let's do that crazy shake out, the rattling the bones. Just to whatever extent your body wants to do it. And please don't be self-conscious or if you are, do it anyway, because nobody could possibly look sillier at this than I am looking. So, and besides nobody cares. Okay. So I want to do some work on the floor. We're going to use a forward bend to get there. So 
I'm going to keep the camera tilted down toward the floor. Basically, what we're doing is a simple upward reach on an inhale, stretching upward. If you feel like arching back a little bit, it's okay for your body. If you feel like doing this cactus arm thing, which was like this, feel free. Inhaling, exhale, forward bend, walk the hands down, unless your body's accustomed to doing this, in which case you do what you know how to do. But the safest thing is knees stay a little bit bent. Weight is somewhat supported by the hands. Anywhere on the legs, it makes sense. Breathing. If this starts to feel okay, we can fold the arms like so. And keep the legs bent or straighten them more. Shake out the neck and head a little bit. Notice the relaxation response on the exhale tends to allow us to let go and sink more deeply. Breathing always. And instead of coming back up, we're going to come down to all fours in whatever way makes sense for you. So cat cow is maybe maybe the most useful movement of any of them for the back. So exhaling, arching back like a cat, inhaling, arching downward like a cow. Exhale, experimenting with. Can you move the arch in the back when you're in this cow position? Can you move it between the shoulder blades more than the lower back? When you're exhaling this way, can you move it more to the lower back? You get a little stretching done there. Just a few more of these at your own pace. Don't forget the hara. It's still there, a center of gravity. And so it is said, a spiritual center, a center of spiritual energy, at least in the Chinese tradition, which is carried into Japan and Korea, now here. So let's return to neutral. And I wish I had a more dignified name for this, but we're going to do butt revolutions. So we're just revolving the butt in one direction like this. And if we tuck the pelvis, we can feel that loosening up going into the lower back. So the lower back is arching up and down as the pelvis tilts back and forth as we revolve the butt. And this is really nice for lower back. Of course, it's good for the hips too. Breathing and also, what's the center of this revolution, but the hara. So let's keep some awareness with that in the other direction. These variations on cat cow are great to do in the morning before the first sit. If you even have five minutes. They don't have to be too vigorous. You find your 
comfortable range of motion. It's more important to warm up than to overstrain. Okay, now back to center. We're gonna inhale and on the next exhale, we're gonna look past our right shoulder at our right heel. And just take a few breaths. So that we can feel that stretch along the left side. Use that relaxation response of the exhale. Sink more deeply and to let go extra muscular tension and effort that's not needed. Inhale back. And we'll do the other side. Looking past or over the left shoulder and the left heel, to the extent you can. Please always take care of your body and do any variation that makes sense to you. Breathing. Going back to center. I'm going to turn the mat to, to help. Hopefully, help you see the next move a little better. This is a version of child's pose. Probably a lot of you have done this. It's going to begin with knees wide. Um, if you need a bolster or cushion or something of your bottom to make this work, feel free to do that. Basically, we're going to rest back on our heels like this with the legs wide. And we're going to walk the hands forward. And your forehead might come to the mat, it might not. However far it comes, keep stretching the hands forward so we're getting length in the back. And this is actually a rest pose. So if you can find a place to come to rest with it. If your forehead reaches the mat, that's helpful, or you can put something underneath it. And you may find that if you raise up your hands on fingertips like that as a stretch forward, that that brings the shoulder blades together, opens the chest, kind of opposes the thoracic curve, and opens that up in a good way. And then just settle into it, relax it. Each exhale, allow yourself to let go more deeply. Once you're in this position, it actually takes very little actual effort. See if you can let all the effort go. Now on an inhale, let's come part way up. And we're going to walk the hands over to our left side as far as they want to go. And we're basically going to do the same thing and walk the hands out so that we're getting a stretch along the right side and lengthening right the back. We'll also feel the support of the hips. We go down as far as is natural for us. You can also try coming up again on the fingertips. And then release into the position. A few breaths. Walk back in the other direction. Walk the hands back in the other direction. And we're going to stretch out to the right. And the same thing. By the fingertips, if that does help pull. Breathing. Releasing with every exhale, a little more deeply.
Okay, I want to do a little lying down twist with uh, a relaxation pose at the end. I'll point the camera down. So what we're going to do here is extend, in this case, the left leg. You might need a cushion under your head. The arms can go out in a Christ-like manner. We'll take a moment here, and on an exhale, we're going to take our left hand across the right knee, and we're going to draw it into a gentle twist as far as feels good. And your head turns to look at the outstretched right hand, which is facing up. And breathing. This is a great one for the hips. Yeah, right up to center. We'll do the same thing on the other side, right leg extends. Right hand goes to the outside of left knee. Left arm extends. We're going to use the right hand to pull that knee downward into a twist while the head turns to the left or the outstretched arm. Breathe in. On an inhale, coming back. Let's hug both knees to the chest. We've got about a minute to do a relaxation. But rocking back and forth a little bit while holding up to the knees can be very helpful. The lower back. And then let's just stretch out and Let's do the pencil stretch lying down. And as we do that with the arms extended overhead, let's tense up every muscle we can get to in the body. We'll stretching the heels toward the far wall, the upturned palms toward the other wall, tensing everything, everything, tensing the face, every muscle. Hold for a minute. On the next exhale, just let it all go. Just a few breaths, each exhale, letting it go a little further into the floor, heavy floor, take the weight, releasing muscles, releasing tension, letting the flesh hang from the bones. As you feel ready, you can roll to one side, take a fetal position for just a moment. Use your hands to help push you up. Thank you all very much. I'll see you in the Zendo.